that's an important thing from a perspective of a parent to know whether their child can see. Valentino was born um, in 2006. He's 11 and a half years old. He was born perfectly healthy, normally developing. Uh, and then um, when he was about three and a half, he had a near drowning episode uh, that he uh, was diagnosed with a significant global uh, developmental delay uh, and uh, significant uh, traumatic brain injury. One of his many diagnoses was uh, cortical visual impairment. We didn't know whether he could see. About a year um, after his, uh, his, his incident, uh, we started to look for options for treatment. We've met plenty of clinicians along the way who said, you know, they look at Valentino in any one given, you know, second, they'll make a decision, oh, he can't do anything. Um, this is just the way it is. This is the, this, the situation, accept it. So we started to, to look around uh, in, uh, in Hong Kong where we live, around Asia, and also in New York. Uh, where, where I'm from. Valentino's parents had heard of my work and asked to come uh, see the research that happens at the Burke Medical Research Institute. His parents were most concerned about his inability to become visually aware, that he only occasionally followed their faces. When I took her to Glenn Prusky's lab and she saw the method that he developed for um, testing rodents and their vision, she said, my son can do that. And what we found really helpful, uh, and we're so grateful to, to, have to have had this experience, is there was someone, there was a, a group of people who understood the brain, who understood the intricacies of what we need to improve, uh, and led us. The blind is not Valentino, it's actually us. Valentino's parents uh, were impressed that you could measure vision in rodents in, in the way that we did, and wondered if the technology or the approach we used was able to enable him to have his vision measured. Valentino's role is absolutely essential, although this wouldn't exist without him, I think. Initially, he came and we kind of did a modified version of the rodent system for Valentino, where we had a camera that watched his eyes and we placed information on the screen and moved. And we were able to show that indeed, he was able to track information on the screen and do it smoothly. And it was actually at that time, the first time that we could really tell uh, his parents that he could see. And over the course of the, you know, the past six years, we first took it from the concept and a, a sort of a rodent adapted system to a specifically human uh, system. The unique thing about uh, working with this team is, I think it's just the, the tailorization of, of this concept. And one of the things that Valentino's uh, uh, functions actually that were left intact and actually quite sharp uh, is his hearing. His penchant for music really, really motivates him. The music really helps because he mm -hmm. actually is probably very musical. I took uh, an ordinary computer monitor screen uh, as wide as we could find and I used some of the software toolboxes that are out there for presenting very carefully controlled visual stimuli and developed an algorithm that would take input from uh, an eye tracking device and determine in real time whether the person's eye movements were smooth or not and smoothed along the expected trajectory and connected that to a, a system that played or paused a piece of music. What these guys do, and I think this is very endemic to uh, people who do research, uh, scientists, is trying to find a better solution than what you have today. The system, which we call optokinesis, is a device that enables us to measure visual function in children uh, who otherwise uh, vision measurements aren't possible in them because they're uncommunicative. Uh, so it's a new breakthrough, we hope, in our ability to measure children. And then over the years, uh, Valentino has been regularly measured. Um, uh, and indeed, we've shown that his visual function has vastly improved over that time. It's part of our daily uh, training for Valentino. Uh, for, for his vision. We believe uh, and have seen that he's actually gotten better uh, with, uh, you know, from this program, using this program on a very regular basis. It's exciting. It's, uh, it's, it's a sort of rather fast-moving uh, facet of neuroscience. From one 
child, Valentino. We've now tested uh, about 30 children at Blythdale Children's Hospital. Actually, by this measurement, we can say that not only can they see, but they can see as well as other children the same age. The expertise at Blythdale, uh, their care of kids with uh, those kinds of disabilities, we're finding it a, a real delight. Um, it's definitely far more advanced and uh, reliable than the options that we find in Asia. Uh, and uh, I mean, very truthfully, I'd love to bottle that up and bring it back with us. And yeah, Blythdale's kind of uniquely equipped for, to, to, to make a whole kid you know, better. So what we want to do is to not only measure once, but measure and give experience many, many times as a form of therapy. If modern medicine's kind of reached the edge of its ability to help, there are researchers who are dedicated to pushing that envelope. There was nothing available and now there is, and that's an incredibly satisfying uh, achievement. I would love for him to be able to meaningfully uh, communicate, uh, and, and that's something that we're also uh, working with, uh, with uh, Blythdale and with Brooke. Hopefully we'll get that.